All right, let's go back to our top story this evening. The Lok Sabha passing the amendments to the Companies Act today. For more on this, we are now joined by Yogesh Sharma, Partner Assurance at uh, Grand Thornton. Yogesh, thanks so much for taking this call. So, a lot of amendments going through as was widely expected, of course, reporting of fraud and related party transactions, etc. What is your first take on the amendments that we've seen go through the Lok Sabha today? Uh, well, um, uh, I think we expected a lot more uh, through these amendments, but uh, at least there are a few in place which uh, probably makes it more make, make, makes the act more practical and easier to implement. So I, I think a couple of key ones I, I would uh, uh, highlight from Grant Thornton's perspective. Uh, first being with respect to related party transaction, I think it's been a relief uh, to align some of the provisions with the same requirements. Uh, lately, I think uh, Clause 49 got revised, and uh, now Audit Committee can give an omnibus approval, um, which means a one-time approval for a transaction up to a limit, uh, which was not there in the Companies Act. So it was quite uh, the Companies Act actually provided for a transaction by transaction approval by the Audit Committee for the related party transaction. So it made it very complicated for the public companies or listed companies who had uh, more flexibility with the same requirements as compared to the Companies Act. So that this aligns uh, uh, the requirements to the to the SEBI requirements, which is good. Um, and uh, the, the, the other one, which I think uh, uh, worth highlighting at this point, and obviously uh, we got to read the fine print, is uh, in relation to the fraud reporting. Uh, auditors were supposed to previously, prior to this amendment, reward, um, report every possible fraud to the government. It could have been a, even a minor expense claim, fraud by, a, by an employee, junior employee, which may be like 100 rupees. Uh, and that needs to be reported to the central government, obviously taking a lot of time, uh, effort from everyone's side to report, to analyze, to investigate, uh, and file a report with the government. Now, uh, obviously, now, uh, would have been very difficult. Government is bringing in through this amendment a threshold. We don't know what the threshold is yet, which uh, obviously going to get prescribed through the rules. But at least there will be a threshold up to which the reporting needs to be done only to the so, board of directors or audit committee. So, so that's going to be a big relief. And as not well. every single uh, minute fraud will have to be reported thanks to these amendments. I want to, uh, you know, I want you to throw light also on the amendments that relate with the winding up of companies. To what extent will they make the procedure now a little simpler? Will we see easier winding up? And as a result, will we actually see more companies, uh, you know, file for uh, the winding up option? I, I think so, but I'm yet to get into the details of that. But, th but that's what I believe. I would agree to that. Okay. Any other amendments that you think really stand out that will immediately have an impact on uh, the way we are, uh, you know, seeing auditors, uh, you know, deal with the, the situation right now? So, Bob, other than these two, I think uh, there were a couple of corrections made, um, and there is a, there's a punishment provided for violation of law with respect to acceptance of deposit, which is good. The other other big change I would th say is a change in uh, the special resolution requirement for related party transaction to an ordinary resolution mm. requirement. So previously, uh, uh, two thirds had to agree, or three fourths had to agree to to really approve a related party transaction, which could have been very difficult uh, in in a situation where the minority numbers are very small. Uh, but at least all these resolutions, which is more than 50 percent, seems to be more practical to me. So, so does it take away all the hiccups now, or at least most of the hiccups in related party transactions, or uh, would you like to see further fine tuning? Or let me put it this way: What are the fine, fine, what is the fine print and the finer points that you would like to see in the notifications as and when they come out? So, uh, you know, there, there have been quite a few representations made uh, uh, with respect to uh, more changes. So, for example, let's say um, uh, audit uh, limits per partner. Um, that has been one of the again recommendations by auditors as well as uh, by the industry. So now the requirement has changed through the new act from being accepting audit total number of audits which previously used a uh, chartered accountant could accept was 30 has changed it to 20. Obviously resulting into a 50 percent more need of, uh, of the qualified chartered accountant, which is not there. Uh, and th that that was again one of the recommendations which, which has not come in. Similarly, some of the related party uh, approval requirements are still still a little confusing. So uh, the proposal has been to exempt uh, private companies completely from related party transactions, which would have been in line or aligned to yeah. more international requirements. So that, that has not happened. Uh, similarly, I think there are there are a few other changes with with respect to, especially with respect to the private companies, um, uh, which uh, whether it's restrictions related to loans to directors or uh, intercompany investments, which one would have expected to come through this amendment. So. Uh, which has not been there, which is a disappointment uh, in my view, uh, but hopefully uh, even those are considered in future.
All right, Yogesh, many thanks for joining us with your analysis and thoughts on what we've seen in the looks about today. The amendments to the Companies Act finally making its way through the lower house of parliament. We'll take a quick break on that note, but on the other side, while well, it's the government in top gear, they are now